I have a secret to tell you. My kids love vegetables. At the end of last season, we had just arrived at the Green Thumb Farm stand when my younger daughter cried out with unbridled joy, Mommy, can we get the purple cauliflower? My older daughter then shouted out with equal exuberance, and the sprouted broccoli, it looks so good. That same child then literally cheered, yes, can we get the broccoli robbed too? And then they asked for Brussels sprouts and sunchokes and kale and carrots until I had to say, girls, enough. We have enough vegetables. The people behind the register were stunned. This display of excitement rivaled kids at a candy store, kids at a toy store, preteens at Sephora. <laughs> and as I'm sure you can imagine, with all of this vegetable enthusiasm, my kids eat well. Yes, they still have pretzels and brownies. I mean, they are kids. But at mealtime, they eat well. When the food is on the table, there's no debate, no deal-making, and no drama. While this may or may not be the case at your house, getting back to our roots will get us there. And what if this one easy idea could make all the difference? By the time we're finished, I hope you will have a picture of what another food universe might look like, another paradigm for your family's meals. If you think there's something new here, I assure you, there's not. It's very, very old. Let's begin. I'm Melissa Casper Shapiro, and for the past 15 years, I have been happily knee-deep in locally grown food. As an investor, as well as a leader in the sustainable food movement, a farmer in the Bronx, and even a farmer in my own apartment. From my local food investing, to nonprofit involvement with a group focused on bringing healthy fruits and vegetables to all New Yorkers, to my weekly farmer's market visits, to my new beekeeping apprenticeship. <laughs> vegetables need pollinators. I am consumed with the consumption of nutritious food. But it wasn't always this way. We all have to start somewhere. For me, it was in 2008 when I just wasn't feeling that good. To put a finer point on it, I was totally burnt out. As a partner at a hedge fund working 14-hour days in the office, not enough sleep, inadequate food as fuel, I felt grateful to find a doctor who cared about what I ate and encouraged me to keep a food log. When asked to describe my typical lunch, I told him about my healthy eating. I proudly honed in on my turkey sandwich, which contained protein, whole grains, and not one, but two vegetables. <laughs> he wasn't impressed. I quickly realized that almost everything I ate was coming from a package, like the turkey and the bread, and that which didn't, like the lettuce and tomato, had very little, if any, nutritional content. As I became more aware, I realized that the vibrancy I wanted to feel was not going to come from a package. I needed to eat less from a packaging plant and more from a plant plant. But where would I find these plants? I could go to the supermarket, but I was committed to reconnecting with my food and nature, and therefore, I needed the real thing, food closest to its source. Yet, without a garden in my backyard, without a backyard, 21 stories above any yard, this was a daunting task for any New Yorker. But if you've ever walked by an abandoned lot and seen greenery thriving, or even seen a dandelion emerge from a crack in the sidewalk, you know food still grows here. In fact, it once grew everywhere. New York City has a rich history of farming. This grid on which we now stand was once entirely farmland. This was until the late 1800s, when suddenly farms stood in opposition to the cosmopolitan image New York City wanted to project. But until that time, 
Brooklyn was the second largest agricultural county in the entire country. Number one, you ask? Queens. <laughs> and before them, the native Lenape inhabited this land. They had ceremonies and rituals focused on food and harvest, celebrating the changing of the seasons and their connection with the earth. They were one with the earth. I was not one with the earth, but I was one with my office and one with the deli downstairs. But in true New York style, I pivoted. Suddenly, I was starting the Stone Ledge Farms Community Supported Agriculture Group, otherwise known as a CSA. This is when you buy an entire season of produce in advance from a farmer. It's essentially like owning a share in a farmer's harvest. Then, each week for the roughly 23-week growing season in the Northeast, you get a basket, bag, or box of vibrant seasonal produce. Of course, this was interesting because I had never really even cooked before. And I may have been one of those New Yorkers in tiny apartments using my oven as storage. <laughs> but this community-supported agricultural box began my vegetable immersion. It was overwhelming and dreamy all at once. Once I had the spinach, I was hooked. I was like two different people, before and after. And I felt so good, I couldn't stop talking about it. And this inspiration made cooking so easy. The farm gave us recipes, they were easy to make, and the food tasted great. I rejoined the CSA every year. When I had kids, these were their first foods. Their love of vegetables comes from the CSA, food the way it was meant to be. Coincidentally, as I was reconsidering my food, at work, I was evaluating an investment reconsidering food. Maybe you've heard of it. Chipotle? At the time, Chipotle was totally understood, misunderstood by Wall Street. They cared about farmers and the sourcing of their food. What I was essentially doing was falling in love with B Corp investing before it existed. Companies focused on a triple bottom line, caring about people, the planet, and profits as opposed to companies just focused on profits. What Chipotle highlighted for me was that investing could be about so much more than making money. It could be about funding the good work, improving lives, and making the world a better place. Over time, I left public market investing for early stage seed investing. I took the lessons learned from Chipotle and invested in small companies with the potential to make a big difference in the world. When my older daughter had a negative reaction to milk as a baby, I joined forces with a grass-fed dairy company, supporting family farmers, the land, and individual health, as this dairy was much more easily digestible for children. That same month, I invested in a children's vitamin company, the first that I knew of to have no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. I also invested in many other mission-driven concepts like medicinal mushrooms, kelp, even a functional healthcare company. But I invested in bringing others on board as well. I was the goat's milk distributor for the neighborhood. I hosted an event focused solely on introducing kids to the love of vegetables. And to my absolute delight, over 300 people showed up. Suffice it to say, Having kids love vegetables and be healthy has moved far beyond my family and has become the driving force behind almost everything I do. Let's cut to my kids and some cut up vegetables. The scene, a cafeteria nearby, not too long ago. Marin is my older daughter. She has lots of food allergies. And like most people vigilant about what they eat, she feels comfortable, more comfortable, bringing her own lunch to school. When Marin's friends began snacking on her carrots, I sent more, multiples more, so that those more inclined, vegetable-inclined friends could share. Over the next few weeks, I received several calls from Marin's friends' moms about where to buy 
Marin's carrots. <laughs> and at school, when one friend questioned the attributes of these special carrots, another friend replied matter-of-factly, they taste better because Marin's mom cuts them with love. <laughs> and while this is true, I think what, is every, what everybody is getting at is the nutrition of Marin's carrots. So, where do they come from? Marin's carrots come from Greg Swartz at Will-O-Wisp Farm. Greg grows the carrots with love. We refer to Greg as our family farmer, as he is an integral part of our family's life. I see Greg to buy all of our family's produce, well, almost all of our family's produce, every Wednesday morning at the Union Square Farmer's Market. But why do his carrots taste better? Because Greg is a true steward of the land. And if you ask him what he does, he will tell you he's a soil farmer, not a vegetable farmer. A soil farmer. This is what you taste in his carrots. Healthy, living soil that gives them their flavor. Flavor reflects a vegetable's nutrient density. At one point in time, those little supermarket source baby carrots looked good to me. That's what I bought. But baby carrots are processed which immediately takes away some of their nutrition. And did you know that produce on average travels 1,500 miles and almost two weeks to get to the grocery store? And sadly, much of our soil lacks adequate nutrients. We've over-farmed and ruined much of the soil. And this is where much of the fruits and vegetables at the grocery store come from, even the organic ones. Organic does not guarantee the inclusion of good stuff, only the exclusion of bad stuff. Marin's carrots are harvested just days before eating. They're fresher, come from richer soil with fewer fertilizers and fewer pesticides. Can we find more of these nutrient-dense vegetables that taste so good kids literally go home and tell their parents about them? Yes. What do we do? We find a farmer who cares about the soil. We find a farmer who cares about you eating those nutrient-dense vegetables. We find more Greggs, because you care about your health and your family's health more than any food company ever will. Now, if all of this resonates and sounds a little too difficult, it's not. In fact, one of the things that might surprise you about New York City is that it can be easy I ran into a friend of mine the other day and told him about my talk. He said he wished there were community-supported agriculture groups in his neighborhood or community gardens. So we put his Bronx address into Google Maps, I'm just so excited to be here, <laughs> and found that he is just a three-minute walk away from one of my favorite community gardens, Finca del Sor, farm of the Bronx, the South Bronx. And my friend Tony Hillary is here, speaking of community gardens. Tony is a true visionary who started Harlem Grown in abandoned neighborhood lots to grow with the kids and provide food for the neighborhood. If we had to imagine what a future of food, a better future of food, would look like in New York City, it would be epitomized by Tony's community gardens. So, to community gardens tend to be little hidden gems, but actually, there are hundreds of them here in New York City, on top of Tony's 12, 550 to be exact. So with 550 community gardens, a growing number of school gardens, over 50 farmers markets, and dozens of community-supported agricultural groups, there's an abundance of opportunity to find good food grown in good soil by people who care about your well-being. But the truth is, this is about more than just food. It's about connection. This is why we love going on vacation in nature, to the ocean, the mountains, or the lakes. Because when we're in nature, we feel like ourselves. Nature is about balance, helping us feel more grounded, more connected, um, more restored, more relaxed. And what if it were literally as easy as bringing nature into our lives each day by eating this more connected food. Why wait? We all need and deserve this nourishment now. So 
how do we move beyond the distraction of news cycles and social media? How do we help our kids feel more grounded and more connected to the earth? How do we transcend the habit of the present with convenience foods, convenient grocery, and convenient food delivery? How do we get back to the proverbial farm table, get back to nature, and return to the rhythm that living in harmony with the land provides? The answer is easy. We already did it. We need only to follow the footprints of the past. We can all do it, and no step is too small. So what do we do? We get to know a farmer. Get to know a farmer growing good food in good soil. Where? At a farmer's market, a community-supported agriculture group, or a community garden. While you're there, take home a vegetable or two. Make plans to make a meal with the family. Let the family plan the meal. Make plans to visit the farm. We already do this when we go apple picking or pumpkin picking. When kids participate, they reconnect with their food. Like Ben Franklin said, tell me and I forget. Teach me and I may remember. Involve me and I learn. And finally, where there's no vision, there's no hope. This was said by George Washington Carver, perhaps the most famous soil farmer in US history. So let us plant a seed, a seed that becomes a root, a root that anchors us and our families to the source of our food, food that goes above and beyond in delivering nutrition and sustenance, its connection. We come from nature, we are rooted in nature, Instead of racing forward with everything else in our lives, join me in returning to our roots. It's worth fighting for. Let's go back. Let's begin. <laughs>